Things you might not know about playing in a professional orchestra. We have a met. Hi, I'm Megan. I'm a violinist and violin teacher currently based in New Jersey. I've been playing the violin for over 20 years. I have both my bachelor's and master's degrees in violin performance, and I'm a Suzuki trained teacher. Although I'm not a full-time member with any orchestras at the moment, I have subbed with professional orchestras, and I'm here to tell you some things that you may or may not know about playing in a professional orchestra. The first and maybe the most obvious thing is that you have to audition to get in. The players in these orchestras are held to very high standard and they're not just going to let anyone play with them. So you must take an audition before joining the orchestra. The orchestras will post about these auditions in various places including their own websites and some other sites like Audition Cafe. And along with the announcement of the audition and when it, when it is, they'll also give you the audition requirements. Most often it's a movement of a standard concerto, a movement of Mozart, and some excerpts. There's also sometimes solo Bach, Bach asked for. There is a list of standard excerpts and most orchestras ask for a different combination of these excerpts, but sometimes there are excerpts on there that you might be learning for the first time. Before you audition, you have to send a deposit of $50. Most often it's a check, um, but I know some orchestras um, now accept online deposits as well. Um, and this is essentially just holding your place for the audition. Um, it will be returned back to you if you actually show up for the audition. In terms of the actual audition, you get there and you'll draw a number, which tells you the order that you'll go in. And additionally, they'll give you a shorter list of excerpts to play for the first round. So say there was 10 excerpts on the total list, you might get two, three, maybe four to play in that first round. They'll hear everyone and then they'll make cuts. Also, these um, auditions are blind, so they are not seeing you when you audition, and they have a carpet for you to walk on. Um, you know, several years ago, well, actually it wasn't that long ago, but um, orchestras used to be limited to men, and um, they were biased towards men because they could, even though the auditions were blind, they could hear the ladies' high heels walking, so that's why they have the carpet app. All the auditions I've taken have still had that carpet, so. And usually there's only two rounds. I'm sure for major orchestras there's more than that, but then they will announce to everybody who got the job. And even if you don't get the job, you can be put on their sub list, which is what happens to me. And they will call you if they ever have an opening that they need to fill. Being a string player in an orchestra has some unique elements to it. First of all, all string players have stand partners, meaning that's someone that you share the stand with. There is the inside player and the outside player. The outside player is the odd number of chairs, or you can think of the people that are closest to the audience. So they chair one, three, five, seven, so on. The inside players are the even number of chairs, chairs two, four, six, eight, and they're the ones that are closer to the orchestra. The outside and the inside player have different jobs. The inside player um, turns the page. The outside player brings the music. Typically, the orchestra will give originals of the music to the outside player to keep in use, and the inside player just gets copies. Also, chords and double stops are often played in BC, which means divided. So if you see a chord or a double stop, you're not going to play that entire thing, but you're going to play either the top note or two if you are the outside player and or the bottom note or two if you are the inside player. Additionally, here in the U.S., um, orchestras are unionized. So what that means is when you join an orchestra, you will also have to join their union. The union does many very important things for musicians, but the way that I have seen it, I guess, manifest <laughs> um, the most is with um, um, rehearsals. So rehearsals must start and end exactly on time. So say your rehearsal ends at 9.30, you cannot go a minute past 9.30, even if the conductor didn't get to everything they wanted to. Even if you're in the middle of playing a tune, the rehearsal must end on time. 
The union also plays a big part in wages for musicians. Also, each orchestra has a union steward, and this is a member of the orchestra who basically represents the union and makes sure everything is running smoothly. Professional orchestras also do not have a lot of rehearsals. If you're in a community or school orchestra, you most likely spend weeks and weeks and weeks preparing for a, for, for, for a concert, but that's not the case um, with professional orchestras. Most professional orchestras have between two and four rehearsals um, before the performance. So that means you really need to know your part before you get to the rehearsal. Additionally, if you win a position in an orchestra, you are on track to get tenure. And tenure essentially means you can never be fired. So the tenure process is different for every you know, orchestra, um, but I know actually for my husband, my husband has tenure. He just had to play a certain amount of concerts and I'm sure you know other musicians had to give feedback on him as well, but he got tenure with his orchestra, so he can never be fired. Obviously there's caveats in that, but um, it does offer just a, like a little bit more um, comfortability in your orchestra position. Finally, not all orchestras are salaried. The big orchestras are, but the smaller, uh, more regional orchestras are per service. Though, so there is a certain amount that they will pay you per service. Everybody gets the same amount except for the principals and concertmaster, of course, who get more. Additionally, some air, um, orchestras will also offer you travel. Um, if you're traveling farther than a certain number of miles, they'll give you a certain amount of money per day for your travel. Also, some orchestras will give you hotels or set you up with a host um, so that you can stay um, in the area while the concert cycle is running. So. If you have any other questions about playing in professional orchestra that I didn't cover here in the video, please drop them in the comments. Make sure you subscribe before you go and thank you for watching.